Yay! Welcome to Advanced Toastmasters Online. Where? Yay. There we go. Welcome to Advanced Toastmasters Online. Here are some online meeting tips if you're watching this from the outside on the recording. You can use a headset or earbuds if you get feedback or if you want to make sure that we don't hear some feedback or what's in the background. Um, you can mute your mic when you're not speaking. That is found in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. And you can also toggle your video on and off while you are joining us, but we like to see you. And if you'd like to adjust your view, this view that you're seeing on the screen here is called a gallery view, where you can see everybody who is in the meeting. And if you want to adjust to speaker view, you can do that from your side by pressing on that speaker view uh, button up at the top. So you'll only see the active speaker, the person who's speaking, which is why we mute our mics while other people are speaking so our video doesn't pop up. If you have questions or notes from the speakers or for the speakers, add those at the chat function right there, that little chat button. And also do those in between speeches as well because that chat box will pop up when somebody's speaking. It's a little bit distracting. So you can do that either privately to the person that you're sending a message to or in between the speeches. That would be perfect. As a reminder, this meeting will be recorded. Our policy is that by participating in our meeting, you agree that a recording will be available uh, publicly on our YouTube channel and on our website. And if ever you want us to remove a part of your speech for contest reasons, we can do that. It's pretty easy. And to join our club, you go to ato.toastmost.org. You can start there where it says become a member and you'll see all the information about our club membership dues and our requirements, which are we do require everyone to be an advanced Toastmaster, which is competent communicator or above, although many of us are DTMs, so. And at this time, I'd like to put the gavel down and say, welcome to Advanced Toastmasters Online. Eventually, I will have a real gavel to do that. I know Doug has one right there, so we can click that in. And I'm going to read the mission of our, of our particular Toastmasters Club. We are an advanced Toastmasters club which supports Maverick leaders to have more impact by providing advanced feedback on leadership skills and discovering what it means to be out of the box innovative leaders. Today's theme is the roast. And I will be your acting Toastmaster of the day. And my name is Dawn Nocera and I don't know, oh yes I did start recording. Uh, my name is Dawn Nocera, and I am in Columbus, Ohio, and I see that we have, do we have, is that, we have a guest. Would you like to unmute yourself and, and let us know where you're coming from and how you got here? Kathy Berry, Lincoln, Nebraska. Hi, Kathy. You got I'm your Angela's friend. Off? Angela's yeah. friend. <laughs> Welcome. Yep. Awesome. Kathy and I were in... Uh, our real life club together before I moved to Ohio. That's awesome. I've known Kathy for years. That's great. Well, welcome, Kathy. I appreciate Thanks. you being here and um, welcome. So with that, I am going to move on as the Toastmaster of the meeting today. Um, I'm going to introduce our different roles. We have Angela, who will be our timer today. Angela, can you explain what you'll be doing as our timer? Yes, I will be timing the different parts of our meeting. Do we just have the one speaker today or do we have two? I think it's just me, yeah. Okay, so Don, you will get the green card at three minutes, the yellow at four, and a red card at five minutes. Our evaluators will get a green card at two minutes, yellow at two and a half, and a red at three. And table topic speakers will get a green card at one, yellow at one and a half, and red card at two minutes. And this is to help us learn to speak concisely. Yes, thank you. 
And do we have anyone who would like to be our grammarian or have a word of the day for us today? Anyone just want to throw one out? Hmm. Any thoughts? Aaron, you have one? I uh, see. I was just joking, putting like Aaron is the word of the day. But oh, I'm Aaron just... is the word of the day. Okay, uh, so we can make no, Aaron joke, the joke. word of the day. Joke. Joke. I would get many, many points for that since my speech is going to be a roast about Aaron. <laughs> So I've already gotten a few points. Um, our, the way our meeting is structured is like all other Toastmasters meetings. We'll start with our prepared speeches, move into table topics, and then move into our evaluation portion of the meeting. And at this point, I'd like to introduce myself as the first speaker of the day. And I'm going to be doing the roast. And the purpose of the roast um, is to... Oh, wow, I just had it up and now I've lost it. So I'm not going to tell you what the purpose is. It's to, it's to kindly roast a, a member or somebody and make some jokes, make some lighthearted comments about a particular person. And I will be roasting Aaron Long from Hong Kong, who is joining us on the screen. And so with that... <laughs> I will start, and if my timer can start now, that would be great. So, what is a person in Hong Kong doing attending an online lunch meeting in the US? Lunchtime here is the bewitching hour of 1 a.m. in Hong Kong. Shouldn't you be sleeping, Aaron? I remember the first time I met Aaron, was at a competitive communicators club meeting. It's another online meeting and it starts at 7.30 p.m. here, which meant it was at that time, 7.30 a.m. in Hong Kong, where Aaron lives. At a time where some of us would be pressing the snooze button so we could sleep a little longer, he made it to each meeting rubbing the sleep out of his eyes with a travel pillow around his neck just in case he does fall back asleep and ready to lead as sergeant of arms. He's now the president of that club, but for as long as I've known Aaron, he has called himself a toastaholic, which he explains is someone who's addicted to Toastmasters. But I think he's more of a toastamaniac because he is out of his mind obsessed with Toastmasters. I mean, who else would attend more than 15 Toastmasters meetings in one 24-hour period other than an out-of-their-mind, obsessed toast -a maniac, Maniacal in his pursuit of visiting one more club that day, he visited our meeting with his eyes barely open, clearly needing a nap, but no. There was another Toastmasters meeting to attend and he was going to be there even if it meant he had to sleep talk his way through it, which I'm sure he did. When Advanced Toastmasters Online, this club was starting up, Aaron was there to help us. And it did not matter that he was joining the meeting from a bar on a subway or walking the streets of Hong Kong, he was there. When he did join the meetings from his home, he used background images that placed him this, in the center of a picture frame in an art gallery or the image in the rearview mirror of a car. There's never a boring moment when Aaron attends a meeting. He seems to magically pull props out of thin air and makes Forrest Gump-like connections to table topics, words, or themes of the day, like when he shared a picture of himself, just happened to have one right there, carrying the Olympic flame for table topics questions during the 2017 Olympics. I mean, Forrest Gump, Aaron Long, I don't know. He's obsessed with helping online Toastmasters clubs and individuals succeed. He mentioned at one point that he was mentoring 25 people. I mean, who does that other than a sleep deprived maniac? He's not only helping others, but he also helps himself. He was the first person to complete pathways in his district and in his region. 
his list of Toastmasters accomplishments is so long and so vast that it would take hours to list and explain some of them. One of the projects he started, Project Infinity, would take a lifetime just to explain it all on its own. Just reading his email signature would exhaust the normal human, but not a toastaholic like Aaron. The very word Toastmaster seems to fuel his maniacal flames and give him abnormal superpower to forego sleep and dismiss a normal life. All roasting aside, Aaron's enthusiasm, commitment, and creativity inspire us to learn new things, step outside of the box in both life and in Toastmasters. We appreciate that he continues to miss sleep to visit our club. Thank you very much. And I hope that he continues to have the sweet dreams of achieving all of his Toastmasters goals that he sets for himself, but I think that might require him to actually sleep every now and then. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> oh, and I did want to share one other thing actually before I turn this meeting over, because I am prepared to share with everyone what I'm talking about, his, toast, his signature, his Toastmaster signature is seriously <laughs> long. So this is his signature, just so you know, all the things that he's accomplished, do, 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 do. Let, the, let the credits roll, pathways, <laughs> executive advisory roles. And if you're still awake, <laughs> you know he's not. He's still awake too, never sleeping. Okay, <laughs> I need to stop the share. Um, something happened here on my, apologize, the, apologize for this. Hmm. My screen, oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> back to me. Toastmaster for the day. All right. And at this point, I'm going to turn our meeting over to Andrea, who is going to be our topics master for the day. Andrea Sanger is in Palm Springs, California. <laughs> <laughs> and help me welcome Andrea as our Table Topics Master. Good morning, everybody. And I'm assuming it's now afternoon for most of you or late night for you, Erin. I want to have us roast ourselves. So I would like you to tell me a story about yourself today. And I'm going to Start it off, you're going to pick a number between one and 10, and I'm going to give you a word or a thought that you have to include somewhere in your story. So who would like to go first? Anybody? Doug, I'll have you do it. Pick a number between one and 10. Oh, I have to pick the number I always like to pick. I'll take pi. Okay. Want a whole number, we'll round it to three. No, that's okay. Five's good. I oh, I said pi actually. But pi. Okay, good. three. So, father. Something about you and father. Ah. Well, what an interesting topic to be given because I'm not actually a father and it doesn't look like I will be, but that's okay. When you, uh, when you plan life, you always think of having a family, but sometimes that doesn't actually happen the way you think it's going to be. And I married twice. The second one seems to be much happier than the first one, but in the first marriage, my wife then, she got pregnant a couple of times. It was wonderful. And miscarried a couple of times, which was not so wonderful. 
so just to clarify, Andrea, the word you gave is also the topic. It can be, it just has to be included in it somewhere. Father. Okay. So I didn't get a chance to be a father then. Life happens. But I got divorced, I got remarried, and it's a very happy marriage with a woman who's older than me. Now, she has a daughter of her own who's actually full grown and just last summer got married and went and tootled off to England to get married and be with her husband. So now I might not have a chance to be a father, but grandfather is definitely a possibility. And she tells us they're working on it. Back to you. Thank you, Doug. That was awesome. Again, all I want you to do is include the word somehow in your speech. It can be the topic. It can be a story about that. It can be anything you want. So, uh, Kelly, I'm going to have you go next. Pick a number between one and ten, not three. How about num lucky number seven? Okay. Embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> so embarrassment is an interesting one I think I used to get embarrassed a lot when I was younger um, I remember a specific situation it tells the difference between a 15 year old and a 16 year old I think every teenager is in some way embarrassed about their parents they don't want to be seen with their parents out they certainly want to act like, you know, it's, it's the hired help or just kind of get some distance. So I remember when I was 15 walking through the grocery store with my mother and telling every, you know, telling mom every three seconds, shh, shh, don't talk, don't look, don't do anything. But then I got my sort of revenge a year later when I became 16 and stopped caring so much what other people thought. And at that point, I thought it was fun to actually get on the cart and take a running jump onto the back of the cart and go streaming through the entire grocery store, riding and gliding straight through, standing on the back of the cart. At that point, I taught my mother what it feels like to be embarrassed. Back to you. Thank you, Kelly. Awesome. Uh, Kathy, would you like to try a table topic today? Sure. Number between one and ten, not three or seven. Eight. Eight. Eight is your mother's parents. Grandparents on your mom's side. Well, that's a funny thing about my mother's parents, they divorced when she was young and both of them did not have long lives. And one of my memories of my mother's mother was that she was a toast mistress in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And she was of small stature. And the story was that she wore a dress with a weird pattern on it while she gave her speech. Somebody then told her that the dress was distracting to her speech and that she was mad. And I don't know if she continued in Toastmasters or not, but I have a picture of her from a newspaper article because she was the secretary for the club. And I always think that if people tell me my clothes are distracting or I am distracting, I make it a point to wear that over and over and over again so I can sit next to them. It's just best if you don't mention things to me that you find because my mind just automatically clicks and takes over to be the obnoxious compulsive one. I just, I can't stop. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Aaron. I'm gonna have you do it next. Yeah. Number uh, between one or two. What number? Uh, no, just to clarify, are we roasting for these table topics? 
you're gonna in in essence roast yourself if you can oh, okay uh, i love to do that uh, but yeah uh, what's uh, what's the point uh number any uh, number you want uh one between one and ten uh i usually call myself the last ten please okay joy joy j-o-y joy okay Fellow Toastmasters, most distinguished guests, I love to show my face that if I ever show a bit of happiness, you are in the happy errand mode. Most of the time, I'm usually going around like just like this right now. I'm reflecting myself in a car plane, looking at myself, being very silly, smiling at myself to cheer myself up. Every single day, these days, for the past few months, I try to motivate myself with one thing. I go to the mirror and say, you are so handsome today. And that is so marvelous. And others say, should I have a mustache or shouldn't? You are so many. Everyone loves you. Wow. After I tell the mirror that, that, that mirror, what happened next is that mirror dropped. It fell, crashing on the floor. It never believed me. So I bought a new mirror and we tried that again. And this time, my sister was changing after me for, for the toilet and use of bathroom. And I was trying to tell myself the same thing. However, after my sister came out from the bathroom and I was going to tell, I am handsome today, my sister actually draw something on the mirror. You stink. Literally, I was like, okay. So I am being happy and I'm trying to motivate myself every single day, but I can't even motivate myself in front of a mirror. That's so sad, you know. And the only thing that I can really tell myself to make myself even happier is to go out in front of everyone, wear very cheap t-shirts and shoes. And every time someone criticizes me and says, oh, this beggar, get away from me. I feel happy because they judge me. At least I judge myself as being a happy, carefree person. The difference is that it's about how you judge yourself. And if you judge yourself better, you are the best person on this planet. Whatever you're dressed in, you are awesome. Back to you. Thank you, Aaron. Yay. Angela, Doug, can you time Angela for me? Thank you. Angela, what number would you like? You're muted. Is six still available? Yeah. Six is available and it is fear. Fear. I'm scared of a lot of things, but I think the biggest thing that there is to be scared of is not trying. Usually when you're scared of something or you're, you have fear of something, it's because you don't know what's out there. You don't know if you're going to be good at it, or you don't know if you're going to fail, if you're going to be embarrassed, if, you know, who knows? But if you don't try, then you're not facing your fears. So the only thing to really be afraid of or to really be fearful of is not trying. Once you try, it doesn't matter if you don't finish it if you don't succeed you've learned and the unknown becomes known once the unknown is known there's nothing to fear so i guess i'm kind of scared of a lot of things i have a lot of fear but a lot of that's because i don't like to try new things and I guess in that aspect, I've failed at a lot of things. Toastmasters helps overcome this fear because it gives me a safe place to try. 
and if Toastmasters were a worldwide phenomenon where I could try other things in a Toastmasters type environment, life would be good. But it's not. So I give in to my fear. Madam Toastmasters, Topics Master. Thank you. Awesome. Dawn, you're the last one in the group. What number would you like? Two, if it's still available. Two is available. And it is laughter. Oh my gosh. So I come from a long line of wild laughing women. And it's one of those things that's embarrassing as well as joy giving as well as petrifying because I don't know when I'm going to just bust out laughing because I think life is funny not everyone thinks life is as funny as I think life is funny so when you know, and, I, and like the five-year-old kind of funniness thing you know the five-year-old humor, I, I have that, and it's a little hard to contain. And it's also really hard to contain because of that long lineage of the cackling women's laughter that comes with my family. All of the women in my family uh, laugh, and, and when they get together and laugh, it is like geese whatever the the noise that everyone else who's not a part of that tribe finds to be horribly despicable, <laughs> but everyone in it is like just overjoyed. So laughter for me is a combination of pure fun bubbling up from within. Also fear, how am I going to ostracize everyone else who's not in the laughter? And just to me, one of the best parts of life. So with that, back to you, Andrea, Table Topics Master. Before you go, Dawn, I'm gonna have you pick a number for me. And the numbers still available are one, four, five, and nine. Number five. Five. Okay. The word is sibling. I have two sisters. And I don't even know how many sort of adopted relatives I have. My mother was a serious gatherer of people. We had people living in our house from the time I was very little. And I never knew who I was going to come home to. But through all of that, my two sisters were always there. And I can tell you that I love both of my sisters. However, they are eight and 10 years older than I am, which makes me a third only. And as a third only, I was very independent in my thinking, but I had two older sisters that actually acted like mothers most of the time. So I had, instead of just one mother, I had three all the time they watch everything i did all the time and they pestered me my sisters were pests and, and I, my oldest one is a talker which i think is why i actually joined toastmasters because i forgot to learn how to talk in a group because my sister just took over all the time she did all the talking for everyone my other sister is an artist and she is very, very quiet. And in fact, she is, uh, she is actually a highly dyslexic individual. And when I was 13 years old, so she would have been 21, I helped her learn how to read. I love my siblings. I'm glad I live in California and they live in Washington because I am truly a third born only and like my own space. Back to me, Topics Master. Okay, everybody, thank you so much. That was insightful. I got to learn some great things about each one of you and I am appreciative of that. Although our time is kind of cut short today, 
I think we can move on to our general evaluator. And our general evaluator today is, who is it? Kelly. Yay, Kelly. Why, thank you, Andrea. <laughs> So I'm excited about being the general evaluator with this club because it is such a wonderful space um, in an advanced environment, which means we've all sort of gone through the basics, but we're also coming to a place where we know what it means to improve. One of the analogies I use for the general evaluation and evaluators is you're kind of going along and you hit into something and it knocks you to a whole new level. And that's what this opportunity is. So Toastmasters is very, very adamant that a great portion of the experience at Toastmasters is the evaluation and taking the, the gems and, and tools and everything that are available. So with that said, I am very excited to offer Doug the floor so that you can evaluate the Roast of Dawn. Over to you. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. And also thank you to Don for giving a great roast of Aaron. Now the objectives for the roast are to poke fun at a particular individual in a good natured way, adapt and personalize humorous material from other sources, and deliver jokes and humorous stories effectively. I think that uh, Don accomplished this very well. She was, she was humorous throughout, had us all laughing at different times. And one of the things that I was watching for was Aaron himself. And there were plenty of times where I see him just rolling back with laughter in his chair and having a great time. This is the hallmark of an excellent roast because it's all about having some fun poking a bit of fun at the subject, but not in a way that might excoriate him. And he certainly appreciated the humor. I think Don had a great job. She opened it about uh, the time in Hong Kong, saying that it's past 1 a.m. right now, and Aaron, shouldn't you be sleeping? And in fact, that particular joke kind of was a theme throughout the, or the speech, and it was well done. It kept, a, it kept sort of a, a focus for the whole thing. But at the same time, while she was making jokes and poking fun, she also was edifying Aaron in a great way, in that she was talking about how much she's contributed and accomplished in Toastmasters, and how incredibly, excessively active Aaron can be as a Toastmaster. And I loved her phrase or her word, Toastomaniac. I think that could be a fun word of the day sometime. Now, one of the objectives was to personalize humorous material from other sources. And well, either she did that extremely well or not so much because I didn't really notice other sources of humor. So as a challenge, it could be a good idea to, you know, for the objectives of the speech, work on just a little bit of external material that you could incorporate into uh, playing with Aaron as part of the roast. Although overall, I had a great time. It was funny. You poked some good natured fun at Aaron and I, I saw that he appreciated it and Overall, I think it was a great job that we could all uh, appreciate and learn also about Aaron at the same time. Yeah. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. And if you would like Doug to carry us through more, any more evaluations that others might have for Dawn? I can certainly do that too. Wonderful. Are there anybody else who'd like to add comments, uh, evaluation for Dawn? Angela, I see you. Don, I love the fact that you mentioned how Aaron always has a prop of some sort available. And then you had your pillow handy. I thought that really added a lot. 
I also found myself thinking back to the first time I met Aaron and I could see him in my mind walking down the street um, with his phone out here uh, joining the meeting as he's walking through the midnight streets. So I really appreciated the imagery that you presented. Much, much improved from your toast of Aaron last time. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Angela. Anyone else? Andrea. Um, I like that you, in this one, you, what Don said, uh, what Doug said is carry the thread. This time you did a really good job of carrying a thread all the way through. And I appreciate that in a roast where we can, can where we can see it coming and we can enjoy the process with you. And I just, I just had a lot of fun. Aaron's a really fun guy and you did a fun job of roasting him. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. Any other comments? Okay, Kelly. I'll jump in here as a part of the evaluation team. So Don, fantastic job. Um, you both roasted, which was the point of this, um, but you also uh, took great care of both Aaron and the rest of us while you did it. I completely appreciate that. The couple of things that I throw out that might uh, just take this to another level. We talked about teleprompter last week uh, as it related to Andrea. I think it would help you because I think you were reading all the way across. I believe if something was moving for you at a certain pace, then you wouldn't have to, yeah, you were definitely going back and forth. So that would certainly take it up a notch in terms of not having to move. And again, like I said last week, if you could put it as close to the camera as possible, then it's, it's like you're actually looking at us, almost like a newscaster. Uh, and then the other uh, areas, just making sure that, that you know, like on the share screen, you know, if, if it's sitting there, if it needs an escape or whatever, that's just more practice. Um, but excellent use of uh, caring roast. Thank you, Kelly. Um, I think that brings us to the end of our evaluation and I will turn it back to our general evaluator. Thank you very much, Doug. Wonderful evaluation. Uh, one of the things that I loved about that evaluation was there was such a great use of weaving the objectives. First of all, we were very clear from Doug on what the objectives were. Uh, and that's really important to understand the, the objectives so that we're not off in left field. You know, th this is what the person is working on at this point. And with 10 paths and five levels on each one, there's a lot we could be working on. So we could be just shooting in the dark, but it, it keeps us on track. But what I thought was fantastic about that was just the weaving of the objectives into a unified sort of story and something that could be handed to Dawn in a way that both Dawn could, well, Dawn, Aaron, and the rest of us could all take something away from. So thank you for that. Um, the one thing that I would say, and this is not just for Doug, this is for all of us, because I think we kind of have a theme of doing this, is that since we're the advanced club uh, and we do rounds, uh, just take it on. Because I've seen most of the meetings that I've come to that the evaluator will throw it back to the general evaluator who throws it back to the evaluator to then do the group rounds. So just think with advanced club, own the rounds uh, in addition to your own evaluation. Uh, fantastic job. And now I'm going to take us to a, uh, let's see, I'm going to take us to Angela, if you would let us know how we did on timing. Yes, we did very well timing today. Uh, Dawn's speech was requested at three to five minutes. She stopped at 440 and then she showed us Aaron's signature and wrapped up at 508. Table topics, Doug was 149, Kelly 116, Kathy 118, Aaron 210, Angela 156, Dawn 138, and Andrea right at two minutes. So everybody was at or very close to that one to two minute range. Doug's evaluation was 302 and our round robin was 257. 
something else I do want to mention since we don't have an official grammarian. I did notice we started a lot of sentences with so today. Challenge. That's my report. Wonderful. Thank you very much. All right, and so I'm going to actually take that from uh, what you just started with that and uh, from a grammarian standpoint, uh, there were a few things that I want to point out. One, um, Andrea, I thought uh, that was, I'm going to give a couple of cute things and then uh, just one thing that I heard that might be helpful. Uh, Andrea, you said back to me as table topics. I thought that was very cute and a really nice way to segue when you are all of me, <laughs> all of the people in the, the different roles in that moment. Aaron, uh, just as a note, the you said my sister draw something on the mirror versus my sister drew something on the mirror. Uh, something to, to kind of keep in, in mind. Um, and then uh, Dawn, I just wanted to point out that you had a really nice alliteration of long line of laughing women. Uh, and I that, that sort of struck me, so I thought as a uh, a pseudo grammarian, I kind of point that out. Uh, as a pseudo ah counter, <laughs> going on a coattail of, of Angela. Um, Angela, I heard a, just like you said, a so I guess that was together um, and it felt very fillerish. Uh, Dawn, uh, you used the word like and also a so. Uh, Andrea, there was a, a sound that you used when you were about to say something and you went it was kind of like a looking for a word but you used a, a mouth sound uh to to transition and i kind of noticed that and doug you used a well right in the middle of something that wasn't necessarily uh it was more fillerish um so hopefully that gives you a little something from those two roles now from the overall standpoint uh, as an evaluation of the meeting, we did a great job starting on time. I feel like when there may be military backgrounds or something because uh, either that or Japanese train schedule backgrounds because it seems like a, a 55 shows up and we're on the track and running. <laughs> so great job with that. Excellent introduction um, uh, to the meeting, Dawn. Every time I'm always so impressed. I think the slides are so effective. I think the way that you bring us into the meeting is effective. I think uh, from the first time that I, I came into this meeting, uh, maybe a month ago, I've always felt like it's very professional feeling, but also very welcoming. Uh, welcome the guest. Excellent job. And then I want to also just make a comment. Uh, Andrea, great use of table topics. I haven't seen that before where you have just a, a word you give to somebody. You know, we, we are advanced Toastmasters. We're not trying to figure out how to get the most basic things. So that just takes it up another level, but without being too much, so to speak. So it was very playful, very fun, very creative. And I just want to give you a, uh, a whoop, whoop. <laughs> Great job. Um, let's see. And I, that's all I have right now in terms of this. I thought it was an overall fantastic meeting. I'm super glad that I'm any part of this club and I want to turn it back over to you, Dawn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're super, super glad that you are a part of our club as well. And I was thinking just kind of as we were doing the evaluations today, I, I want to open up an idea for when we're moving forward. I had a question that I wanted to ask. Kelly actually addressed it, which was, how did it, how did I, how did it appear when I was reading? Because I actually was reading that. And I wanted to ask the question. So I, I, I'm proposing that in our general, our evaluation portion, we might give the speaker, especially if we have time, opportunity to ask questions about what they're concerned about, about their speaking as we have time. So, and, and I appreciate Kelly that you addressed the thing that I would have wanted to, to say, and I would have asked had you not addressed it. So kind of just keep that in mind moving forward that we might have time for that. And I know that I might not be the only one who wants to know like, well, I was working on this or how did that feel or how did that sound or how could I have done that better? 
just to keep us growing and moving forward. Angela. Uh, just wanted to mention that those questions are something that you should be discussing with your evaluator in advance if we know who the evaluator is, because then your evaluator can keep an eye out specifically for the things that you want feedback on. Oh, now, yes. if you don't, if you don't have the opportunity to talk to your evaluator in advance, or the evaluator does not mention it, then yes, questions yeah, are a good really thing. Good advanced point for an advanced Toastmaster club. We really should be doing that. Um, however, I don't know that I would have had that just for today. I don't know that I would have asked uh, Doug to pay attention to that beforehand. So I'm just kind of giving us both and. Kelly? Uh, and just thought, just to piggyback on that, I'm doing a lot of piggybacking. Uh, maybe throw out something in the chat to the entire group right from the beginning yeah. so that everybody's sort of uh, geared toward it. If you can do it early enough in the meeting, because I don't always look at the chat. I mean, every once in a while I'll kind of go through. But if you throw that out, then all of us can become um, folks who have that at least top of mind. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you, everyone. And we have the discussion time before the meeting, so you could throw it out verbally then to everyone. Um, yes. Something all of us could do. There, there's some, I, I don't know if this is real or if I'm just making it up, but there, at some level, I'm thinking that, that if you're looking for that, it might distract from actually what you're receiving from the speech and how you take it in, but I could be wrong. We're all Toastmasters. <laughs> we all are professionals, so we can do it. Uh, multitask, I guess. So, yes, I will. Next time, I will make sure I do. That. <laughs> so, thank you. And uh, this time, I'm going to ask our guest, Kathy, how did you enjoy our meeting? Do you have any comments about it? What are your thoughts? I thought it was a lot of fun. Usually, I'm pretty busy, busy on Wednesdays and this week we're working for from home for disaster <laughs> recovery <laughs> so I actually have time to to join and the speech was great it was fun to hear I'm going to roast Santa Claus for our Christmas party nice so you it was fun to listen to somebody give the speech before I actually set out a plan to do it so I also found the feedback helpful as well. Good. But yeah, it was really nice. It's convenient. You know, if you're not at a strict work schedule for that for today. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, awesome. Angela. Well, make sure that you share us with other advanced Toastmasters because our because our time is such that we all love this time, but not everybody knows about it. It really is a word of mouth thing. So I appreciate Angela for sharing this with you. And if you can pass it on to other people, that would be great as well. Yeah, I've tried. I have a friend in Kansas. And then a former Toastmaster is out of the United States. And I think he's somewhere around Venezuela. And he's looking to start his own club. So I mentioned this club, but he said his internet's really shaky. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be, a, you know, could be a problem, but you can always chime in and just, and see as well and visit yeah. kind of like you did just to see what, how it's going. So, but thank you for your feedback and thank you for joining us. And thank you, Angela, for being a wonderful uh, sharer of our club. And at this point I am going to, Unless we have anything else for our meeting, I'm going to close the meeting and open our agenda for next week. Does anyone have anything to wrap up with before I do that? Anyone? Oh, also, I'd like to give a special thanks to Andrea for her additional help with helping me actually roast Aaron as opposed to toasting more and more because that's was super helpful. Her Her feedback was just amazing. So thank you, Andrea. Okay, I'm going to, I am going to stop the recording.